We are in a series called Forgiveness Understood. This is our third week talking about forgiveness. I know forgiveness is a touchy topic. It's one of those things that we all feel like we have a right to be upset and hurt and carry a grudge. But let me just tell you this. If you're holding a grudge, you're not holding on to God. You can't hold on to God and hold on to a grudge at the same time. And those of you that think that you can hold on to a grudge in your right hand and hold on to God with the left hand, you're missing it. You're missing it. Because you need to hold on to God with both hands. You need to get a hold of God with both hands. We gotta let the grudges go. We gotta let offenses go. We've covered a lot of ground in the last two weeks. If you have not been here for both of those services, or if you're watching online and this is your first one to this series, go back and watch the other services. We streamline them, we cut out worship and all that, and you can watch just the sermon in about 30 minutes, all right? So in one hour, you can catch up to where we are today. Today, we're going to discuss having faith to forgive. Having faith to forgive. And the reason why I believe a lot of people struggle with forgiveness is because their faith is underdeveloped. Their faith is underdeveloped. So you get, you get it, I used the letter F and the letter U, faith underdeveloped. We're talking about faith underdeveloped today in our Forgiveness Understood series. Have you ever seen in person or a picture of a bodybuilder? who has a huge upper body, but chicken legs. Uh, I was a bodybuilder for many years and there was always that joke like, bro, do you even do legs? Like, why do you keep skipping leg day? Because leg day is hard, right? Like, but the truth of the matter is if you wanna get into working out or exercise, if you would just work out your legs, it would actually make your upper body bigger, believe it or not. Your, your legs, release so many more endorphins to let the muscles grow. Anyway, free fact. But you look at a guy like that, or a girl like that, you're like, they're huge in their upper body, but their legs are underdeveloped. Their legs are underdeveloped. How do those little chicken legs hold up all that upper body muscle? Upper body, huge, fully developed, but they skip leg day, and they seem disproportionate. They're disproportionate. The legs need to be bigger to match the upper body. Everyone knows something's wrong. Everyone can see it. Could this be the same thing about some people's faith? Could some of us in here today have disproportionate faith? I think we're all in this room today because we have faith that there's a place called heaven. But none of us get to prove that until we cross over to the other side. And so it's pretty easy to have faith for heaven because you're not gonna know until you go. But do you have faith for healing when you feel sick? Oh, it's easy to have faith to pray for somebody else. It's easy as a parent to have faith and pray over your child. I command this fever to go out of their body right now in the name of Jesus. But you get sick. Lord, take this, please, God, I beg you, take this away. God, why aren't you taking this away? Because you feel the pain of sickness. Come on, somebody. I'm just throwing some stuff out there. Could we have disproportionate faith? It's easy to have faith for certain things. Harder to have faith. It's easy. It's fun to bench press. It's fun to curl. Because you see those quick. But legs, squatting, oh, please. 
Hack squats? Oh, please. Leg curls? No way. Lunges? No, listen, if you enjoy lunges, you have a problem. <laughs> we have counselors you can come see. I don't think you love yourself if you enjoy, l lunges are horrible, but the results from lunges are, I think you get what I'm saying. Faith underdeveloped. So you may have faith for finances, you may even have faith for healing, but do you have faith to forgive? Do you have faith to forgive? Could it be the reason you can't forgive or you have a hard time forgiving or the reason why you hold on to people's pasts is because there's a faith in your life that's underdeveloped? You're real big in one area and chicken-legged in another area. I wanna look at a passage of scripture today that maybe you've read before, maybe you've heard preached to you before, but I wanna look at it in a little bit different way. It's Luke 17, verse three. Jesus is teaching his disciples. He's instructing them on how to live, how to be pastors, how to plant churches, how to lead well, how to live a healthy life, and he says this, watch yourselves Watch yourselves, be careful. We're so good at that too, right? Giving everybody advice. Watch yourself. You need to act this way. I mean, I'm not acting this way, but you need to act this way. Watch yourself. Now Jesus, he's the epitome of giving the proper advice because he lived it. But watch this, watch yourself. If your brother or sister sins against you, now let's talk about that for a second. We're not talking about a sin unto death. We're not talking about the rejection of Jesus Christ here, but if your brother wrongs you, somebody hurts your feelings, rebuke them. Tell them straight out, yo, that was wrong, man. That was messed up. Should have done that. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times they come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Like one time was already too much that they hurt my feelings. But seven times. I've got to forgive somebody seven times. And even the disciples, they're like annoyed by this. They're like, yo, seven times? That's crazy. And then Jesus was like, no, seven times 70. 490? Huh? No way. I hope I did the math correctly on that. I know someone pulled out a calculator, seven times seven. So the apostles said back to him, because they're, they're just floored, like, how could I, listen, because in our minds, in our rationale, you did me dirty, you said sorry, I forgave you, but then you did it again. So in our mind, that nullifies the fact that you were sorry, because if you were sorry, you wouldn't have done it again. You went down the first time. And you want me to do this seven times? That's like standing there and getting slapped in the face, turn the other cheek, get slapped in the face, turn the other cheek, get slapped in the face. Come on, Jesus. And the apostles realized something in that moment. They realized in that moment that they had disproportionate faith. They realized in that moment that they did not have the faith to forgive the way Jesus was instructing them to forgive. And so they said to him, the apostle said to Jesus, increase our faith. Increase our faith. We got skinny chicken leg faith. We were, we were walking on water, we're healing people, we're raising the dead, but forgive, I need more faith. And then Jesus says something back to them. He says, if you had faith, let's just pause there. If you had faith, if you had any faith to forgive at all, all you need was a mustard seed amount. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, 
Now, I, I tried to find some mustard seeds, but I couldn't find them in time. But you go get some spicy mustard, that yellow spicy mustard, and it's got black seeds in it. Those are mustard seeds, right? They're tiny. They're like the head of a, a pin, right? If you had faith, little tiny faith, just any amount of faith, you could say to this tree, this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Well, I tried talking a situation in my life, and it never moved. No faith. I tried to pray over a situation, and it didn't happen. Underdeveloped faith. I tried to forgive, and I just couldn't get rid of the feelings. Maybe underdeveloped faith. Because Jesus is sitting here, and he's saying straight out. In another passage, he says, if you speak to a mountain and command it to be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. If you had faith. If you had faith. You see, this passage shows us that forgiveness and faith go hand in hand. Faith and forgiveness go hand in hand. Listen, you will never actually have faith until you receive God's forgiveness. You have a measure of faith to access God. You receive salvation. You receive his forgiveness. Then this next level of spiritual gifted faith comes. The apostles are here asking, Lord, would you increase our faith in the area of forgiveness? We're big in faith and healing because we saw that. We're big in faith, but we've never seen this kind of forgiveness that you're talking about. Would you thicken up our legs and increase our faith? We said this earlier, it's easy to have faith for others. It's easy to have faith for things outside our control. But faith to forgive? Faith to forgive? I've never heard this. This might be why we're having such a hard time letting go of our pasts. Letting go of, because we haven't developed faith in that area. Watch this, put this up on the screen. Unforgiveness in your heart is the most destructive element to your faith. Unforgiveness in your heart is the most destructive element to your faith. Do you, do you know what? We're so used to living unhealthy lifestyles. We're so used to like, okay, maybe my blood sugar's a little high or my... Um, my heart rate, maybe I got a little bit, you know, a little bit of hypertension. And instead of correcting the lifestyle, just give me a pill for that. Just give me a pill for that. I'll just take an extra pill. I saw somebody the other day, they, uh, they, they had an insulin pump, right? And so I watched them sit down to have ice cream and cake. And I thought to myself, what in the world are you doing? And they're like, oh, no, no, it's cool. I'll just add a little extra insulin and I can eat this. And we do the same thing with our spirit. No, I can carry this unforgiveness. It's okay because I'll just, I'll be nice to people in this other area. I can carry this problem with me. It's okay. I volunteer at the soup kitchen. I can carry around this unforgiveness. It's okay. I'm involved in the children's ministry of the church. And we, and we do this and we, don't, and we don't realize that we're so used to living unhealthy that we don't even have a concept. We don't have any faith as to what it could be like to live in freedom. We're so used to living life handicapped, one-handed with a grudge, doing everything one-handed, that we don't even know what it feels like to live life open-handed in faith. Spiritually speaking, unforgiveness is just downright dangerous. It will make you spiritually feeble, and it will steal your confidence towards God. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will make you spiritually feeble. It gives you chicken legs 
when you have other parts of your faith working full force. Unforgiveness will pull the plug on your faith so completely that you will not have enough power to move molehills, let alone mulberry trees or mountains. Jesus did not suggest that we forgive. He commanded it. He commanded us to forgive. It wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't, hey, you know, if, if you want to live healthy, you should. He said, no, you must forgive. You must forgive. Ah, what does he know? He only created the world. He only created you. He knows. I'm going to go here. He knows that unforgiveness is cancerous to your body. Literally. That's not just spiritually. That's not just figuratively. Now, the Bible does say unforgiveness is as the sin of witchcraft. Another scripture says it is as rottenness as to the bone. Rottenness to the bone. And if you look that up, it's cancerous to your body. Unforgiveness, resentment, holding a grudge. I'll never forgive that person. Do you know what they did to me? It will eat your body up. It will eat you up. It's command. He knows. God knows how healthy you could be if you had the faith to forgive. It's a commandment. And being a commandment, it would be unjust for God to command us to do something that was impossible for us to do. Right? Come on, somebody. That's like hiring a gym coach or an athletic coach, and he's asking you to do exercises that you just can't do. That's unjust. That's not right. Like, I can't do squats. You can do them. You just don't want to. You're going to be walking funny for a few days, but it is for your benefit that you do this. It is within our ability to forgive, and you're not going to like this. It is in your ability to forgive no matter the circumstances. Amen. And that's the tough pill to swallow. That's the hardest one to swallow. Because it is within your ability to forgive, it is also within your ability to hold a grudge. And the choice is yours. You can keep eating the ice cream and cake and pushing a couple more buttons on your insulin, or you could say, there is a better way there is choices I could make. I could be in control of my life if I just say I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna cut the cancer out. I'm gonna cut the unforgiveness out of my life. Here's what most people don't understand. Most people don't understand that unforgiveness is actually a form of fear. Come on, get this one for a second. You don't, have to, you don't have to accept what I'm about to say right off the bat, but just think about this for a second. Unforgiveness is actually a form of fear. We don't forgive because we're afraid of getting hurt again. Well, if I forgive them, then it makes what they did okay. No, it does not. It does not make what they did okay. It makes you and them okay. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. We want to pin the sin to the sinner. No, they did this act. It's them. They are the problem. No. The sin of the world is the problem. The sin of the world is the problem. And you not letting them go and live their life after that offense 
is actually your problem. That's your problem. You're choosing to do that. It is the hardest thing in the world. It's, it's fear. I can't let them do that to me again. How in the world could he say, do this seven times? I'm not going through this seven times. He's not saying to go through it seven times. What he's saying in your heart is, I forgive them. Them, the person, I forgive them. I, I, listen, the deed was wrong. The behavior was wrong. The words they said to me were wrong. We should never speak to each other in curse words. That is not acceptable. You're way out of line. You need to grow up. Sorry. Sorry to be your 42-year-old daddy, but you should never use curse words at each other. Like, really, who do you think you are? Grow up. At the same token, I forgive you because you're probably uneducated and you need a bigger vocabulary. I forgive you. Don't do it again. Don't, don't talk to me like I'm your kid. Don't talk to me like I'm some stranger on the road who just cuts you off and you're going to talk garbage mouth to me. Like, that's not what this is. Come on, somebody. Don't be upset at me. You're doing it. That's your behavior. That's your mouth. That's your anger. That's your unforgiveness. Like, you are choosing to do that. Come on, somebody. Quite often we don't forgive because we're afraid of getting hurt again. We're afraid... We'll never recover from the damage that someone has done in our lives. And you may feel that way right now. You may feel some anger towards me right now for saying that you need to get a dictionary and learn some new words. But the truth of the matter is, you can rely on the fact that, listen, God, in Philippians 4.19, he says, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You know what that means? That means this, that if you have a fear of being hurt, you have a fear of loss, that he says, I'll, I'll give, I will provide all your needs. He says, I will fill where you lack. Oh, my God. I will fill where you lack. He, uh, he, he's not just saying that I'm going to give you whatever you want, but he says, I know what you lack. I know the voids in your life that you need me to fill. My God shall fill the voids in my life. Not according to the way I would do it. Not according to my knowledge. Not according to my understanding. Not according to what I can earn or make or do. But according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. This isn't some, listen, this is not some lofty faith sermon I'm trying to preach to you. This is actually more real than your reality today. The word of God is more real and more live and more powerful than what we believe is happening around us in our lives today. In 1 John 4, 18, he says this, let the knowledge of the merciful, protective love of God cast out all your fears. Oh, I love that. 1 John 4, 18. 1 John 4, 18. Let the knowledge of the merciful protective love of God, cast out all your fears. Ready? Once we do that, then forgive by faith. Forgive by faith. Don't forgive by feelings because forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgive the same way you would go about receiving healing. Forgive the same way you would go about using faith for anything else. I don't have to feel it. I don't have to see it. What? Come on. I don't have to feel like forgiving you. It's what I do. It's part of who I am. I know, I know, I know, I know. When I was really into the gym, I went to the gym six days a week. The best workouts, really, were the ones I did not want to show up for. They were the ones where I'm like, I am not in the mood for the gym today. That was the day that I actually saw my best results. That was the day that I did my best lifts. See, going to the gym was a commitment that I had made. 
It had become a, a, a routine in my life. So it didn't matter whether I was in the mood for it or not. See, oh, oh, here's the problem. Here's the problem with, with us today. Ready? And I'm not saying that you are a problem. It's just a problem. We keep waiting for motivation. I want the next thing that's going to motivate me. Let me download the Beachbody app. Motivate me. Listen, when you create a routine, you don't need motivation. It's not an option. This is just something that I do. Like seriously, I don't have to be motivated to get a cup of coffee every morning. It's just something that I do. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I don't need to be motivated to forgive. I don't have to be like, oh, they love me again. And because of what they, now I'm going to forgive. No, forgiveness is just what we do. It's just what we do. We don't have to sit here and have 12 hours of conversation to work it all out. Dear Lord, you forgive me or not? I can't buy no more flowers. The flower shop's empty. I'm sorry. Like, you forgive me or not? Let's move on. Forgive by faith. Make a quality decision. Are you ready for this? Make a quality decision that I'm going to act on God's word regardless of how I feel. I'm going to act on God's word regardless of how I feel. Secondly, speak and act according to that decision. There's another problem, right? I'm going on a diet. But then we don't act according to that decision. Stop eating Chick-fil-A. I know it's God's chicken. But at the same time, like, it's not going to help you to get to the goal of the decision that you said that you make. Listen, refuse to say anything negative about anyone who hurt you. I got to walk a lap. Refuse to say anything negative about a person who hurt you. Even if someone else brings it up, I got nothing to say. Oh, how we love to tell our gossip story. Oh, how we love to relive the hurt days. And what you did was diminish your faith. You increased your hurt. You picked a scab. It was almost healed. And you picked the scab again. Refer, refuse to rehearse in your mind or with your mouth the hurt that has been caused to you. Instead, and you're not going to like this. You're not going to like this. You're not going to like what the Bible says. Ready? Instead, look for an opportunity to bless that person The Bible says, bless those who curse you and spitefully use you. Bless them. I want to. Mm. <laughs> bless those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Bless those who you know are going to talk bad about you behind your back. When you made a decision that was going to be better for them, bless them. And then don't be moved by what you feel. Forgiveness isn't an emotion. It's an act of your will. It's an act of your will. And when, are you ready? And when your will lines up with God's will, bam, 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 bam. The power comes when your will lines up with God's will. Those little chicken legs start filling out. Oh, he got some quads. Oh, he got some calves, right? You start filling up and the proportion it comes because faith is increasing. How do we develop this faith to forgive? Unlike a bodybuilder who must work really, really, really hard 
to develop his legs. Developing faith is actually much easier because God says all you need is a mustard seed amount. You just need a little bit. Just a little bit. If you forgive, I mean if you have faith, you can move mountains. If you have faith, you can move trees. If you have faith, you can remove hurts. If you have faith, you can move offenses. If you have faith, you can remove unforgiveness. It's not a matter of how big the faith is. But is your faith ready? I ain't never heard anybody preach this. One of, ready? It ain't a matter about how much faith you have. Is the faith that you do have activated? Is the faith that you do have activated? You know what a lot of us don't do when we're exercising? We don't activate our core. We don't activate the abs. We try to do the exercises, but we're not squeezing our abs as hard as we can while we're doing those exercises. If you would do that, I promise you, it would change everything about every single one of your lifts. Activating the abs, activating your faith. The only way to truly forgive is by having active faith. A mustard seed in a jar on the shelf can never be activated. He said you gotta have the mustard, oh, I got a jar of mustard seed, but it don't do nothing until you plant it in the ground. You gotta go put it in the soil. You gotta go put water on it. You gotta activate the faith. Activate the faith, how? How? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. What does that have to do with activating faith? Listen, you ain't never gonna activate your faith until you trust God. And you can't just trust him with your head. Well, this makes sense. Because then when God asks you to do something that doesn't make sense, you won't have the trust or the faith. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to what makes sense. In all your ways, in everything you do, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord is an activating agent. Trusting in the Lord is an activating agent to your faith. So activate your faith to forgive by trusting the Lord. If the Lord said life will be better if you forgive, trust him. Amen. Trust him. Number two, Matthew, or Mark eleven twenty four. therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. So ask for the strength to forgive. Ask for it. Say, Lord, you know what? I don't feel like doing what you asked me to do. I am not in the mood. Will you strengthen me to forgive this person? Because I'm having a really hard time. Once you trust Ask for the strength. Activate your faith. Trust him. Ask him. Hebrews eleven six. 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever draws near to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Trust him. Ask him. Draw near to him. Draw near to God. Draw near to God. You're not going to have faith in God if you want to be living out in the world. You're not activating your faith. Get close to God. Get close to his word. Get close to other people who are living according to the word of God. Whatever you draw near to will be the biggest influencer in your life. <laughs> what are you drawing near to? Hey, I'm just gonna throw it out, Mayor, man. If you just keep drawing near to watching more and more news, more CNN, more Fox, whatever you're watching, it's gonna influence you more than your faith in God. Trust, ask, draw near. Number four, Ephesians 3.16, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power 
through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith so that you would be rooted and grounded in what? All right, just say that word a little bit louder. Love. Love is an activating agent of faith. I can't forgive you if I haven't chose to love you. But I don't love them. You better figure that one out quick because you can't get to heaven that way. You can't get to heaven that way. You must love your neighbor as yourself. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and you must love your neighbor as yourself. If you can't click those two check boxes on your COVID-19 test, you ain't got no access. You got no access. You must love. Love activates faith to forgive. I don't love what you did, but I love you. When you can get there, you're getting to that place of true forgiveness. Can I express love and show love to someone who has hurt me? Number five, last one. 1 Corinthians 2.5, this is my favorite. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Rest in the power of God. It says, do not rest in the wisdom of man. Do not rest in what the world's telling you. Do not rest in what the news is saying. Rest in the power of God. Believe it or not, rest activates faith. The more you rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ, the stronger your faith becomes. Listen, God Almighty did not rest on the seventh day of creation because he was tired. God rested on the seventh day to give us an example of how we should live our lives. We need rest. We need physical rest, but we also need spiritual rest. We need to rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Rest shows that you trust him. I got this one dog, little, what do we have? French Bulldog. And she's a little wild dog. She's angry. She just, yeah, she just got an attitude all the time, this dog. And I have to take that dog and like hold her really tight and like pet her face, kiss on her, and finally, after about like five minutes, I'll feel her body relax. She'll kind of like give in and like submit. My other one, he's just so submissive. He just, he's just always like, but her, like I've got to like really work on it. And then when she does that, I'm so much like, oh, I love this dog. She's great. I don't like the wild, but when she just rests and trusts me, there's like a better relationship there. And I just wonder sometimes, like, God trying to get a hold of us. And we're all like, eh, no, but I can't. <laughs> and God's just kind of like, I got you, though. Yeah, but you don't understand. You don't know how I feel. <laughs> but shh, shh, rest. Rest. I'm not angry at you. I'm not disappointed in you. This is God speaking. I'm not disappointed in you. I saw all of this in your whole life. I saw every detail of your whole life, and I still said, I choose you. Rest. Rest that you're already good enough. Rest that you're already enough for the glory of God. Rest. Trust. Ask. Draw. Love. Rest. These are five, and I'm sure there's more, but these are five activating agents of your faith. The faith to forgive. These five things will help your spirit legs puff up, activate, grow, 
make you more proportionate to your faith walk and empower you to forgive. Father, we thank you today that your word is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the only thing that can discern between the spirit and the soul of man. So Lord, we thank you for allowing this word to speak to our lives today. Lord, I pray that this topic today will be part of conversations at the dinner table today. We begin to have these conversations about activating faith and about forgiveness. I pray, God, that relationships are restored, that healing is occurring, that we can cut out the cancer of unforgiveness in our lives and build spiritual legs. We thank you, Lord, today that we're protected and safe. As we leave here today, everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Offering baskets are at the doors on the way out.